Hey guys, Pizza here. Uh, I want to do a quick breakdown of my most recent AI video, talk about some of the techniques I used, hopefully give you guys a couple of tips uh, that may be useful for you on your next AI video project. So let's jump in. Uh, up first, I'm going to walk you through my process of creating the video clips. If you're already familiar, know how to do this. Uh, I'll include chapters in the video, so please skip ahead. Uh, this part isn't useful for you. So generally, uh, I start with mid-journey. Uh, I prefer image to video over text to video. For me, it gives a little bit more control over things. Um, and again, just in my opinion, it makes the overall process a little more quick and uh, easier to handle. So first, jump into your favorite image generator and crank out some images. All right, uh, next step for me was to jump over to Magnific and to upscale these images to add a bit more depth and realism. Um, this is a step that you can totally skip, it's up to you. Um, I find that Magnific added like a lot of detail to the creatures, made them look a little bit more like actual photography of puppets, which is what I was going for for this video. Um, again, this step though is something you can completely skip if you're not interested. All right, up next we're going to create the actual video clips. Uh, for this project, I use Luma Labs Dream Machine. Um, it can be as jank as all the other, you know, text-to-video, image-to-video services, um, but I have found that it seems to have pretty decent, you know, friend-to-friend -friend coherency. Um, I will say that this is one of the first projects that I've used Dream Machine for, and I'm definitely still trying to figure out be prompting. Uh, sometimes I would leave the text input totally blank, and get better results than when I actually ask for specific actions or camera moves. So unfortunately, I don't have any real tips as far as how to prompt a uh, dream machine. Um, you know, keep in mind that a lot of your generations are going to be completely useless garbage um, if you have something really specific in mind. Um, unfortunately, you know, means you have to break out your wallet and drop some cash on your project. Toasty! Right, so if the boring stuff that most of you are already familiar with, uh, next let's actually go over a couple of the shots in the short and I'll break down my process and some of the cool things I did. So up first uh, is a super simple technique to give all the clips kind of a handheld look, you know, similar to like you see on The Office. So you can fake this in After Effects by parenting a null object to your camera and then using a wiggle expression to move the position keyframes around randomly. Um, I find that this is totally passable in general but it, ju it, it usually looks too smooth. The actual handheld footage is a lot more uh, rough and imperfect. So to accomplish that, I drew a couple of dots on a sheet of paper, tacked it to the wall. I then used my iPhone to shoot actual handheld footage for 15 or 20 seconds. Then I imported that footage into After Effects and used the built-in tracker to track two of the dots. After that, I applied that new tracking data we just created to a null object. Uh, I can now use that null logic to drive all of the handheld camera shake in all of the different scenes. Uh, 15 or 20 seconds was way more than I needed for my purpose. Uh, again, it's super simple, but it really helps sell the look and brings a little bit of life to some of these dead shots we got out of uh, Dream Machine. Right, up next, let's cover how I managed to fake these puppet explosions. We'll start by you just looking at these images of this little stressed out yellow guy and I'll explain how I got those clips out of Limo Labs. So up first, generated the image in mid-journey of the low creature. Uh, I used the prompt close-up of a skinny sad creature with short vibrant yellow fur standing at a cubicle desk in an empty office. Its fur is textured with short knotted plush. The creature is skinny with long arms and legs. Then once I got the image that I wanted to start with, I used the very region feature uh, and I went in and roughly selected the creature and swapped the prompt to short, vibrant yellow fur shrapnel scattered across a cubicle desk in an empty office. The fur is textured and yada yada yada. Uh, it looks like a split and explosion went off. The idea is that we keep the same setting, but we swap the puppet out for our now exploded ball of fur. So once I have the image locked, uh, I upscaled in Magnific as we discussed earlier, and then I use the start and in frame function of Dream Machine. So now Dream Machine will spit out a video that starts with image one and ends with image two. Keeping in mind the jank we discussed earlier, um, I was really just looking for anything that would kind of cover the basic motion of the explosion. Uh, the rest of the idea we're gonna do via some editing and some simple tools in After Effects. In fact, so now that we have our clip, I'll break down uh, the explosion with this little green guy here. Uh, you can see that the in the actual clip itself, the explosion isn't really great. Um, 
But for our purposes, things are going to be happening so fast that we can essentially cheat by cutting the explosion up into a couple of pieces. So we'll start with the beginning of the clip, and then we're going to cut to the part where the puppet actually sort of pops and the fur pile settles. Uh, you can see that by smashing those two clips together, things happen so fast that the naked eye isn't really going to notice uh, any trickery there. So the clip looks fine, but we're clearly missing, you know, an actual explosion. So this might seem a bit complicated, but this is actually pretty simple stuff. Um, I use Trapco in particular, uh, but there are numerous other particle plugins for After Effects that uh, she can use. Um, I built a really simple sort of particle explosion. Uh, and once I had that explosion looking okay, I jumped back into Mid Journey and I generated five kind of random fur poofs that are gonna make up each of our particles. Uh, I then instructed Particular to sample one of each of those proofs for each of the little exploded puppet bits. Um, it's not perfect, but it worked for my purposes. After that, uh, I dropped in a stock, you know, smoke asset, colored it to match the uh, tint of the particles, uh, and now we have like a pretty decent looking explosion. One other thing I did on all the explosion shots, just to add a little bit more detail, um, I created a new null object, and this time I actually did use the wiggle expression that we uh, discussed earlier. Uh, but instead of using it to drive the whole camera shake, uh, I basically keyframed it to just add a short burst of jitter as the each explosion goes off. So now the puppet explodes and the camera briefly vibrates, you know, with the rumble. This also produces a nice amount of motion blur, which really helped to sort of hide the imperfections of the scene. Next, let's take a look at our blue friend at the copy machine. This clip is a bit lifeless, but with some love, we do really make it shine. Up first, I added this simple uh, light kind of spilling out from another copy machine, just using a solid with a little bit of feathering. Uh, next, I added an adjustment layer with some exposure brightening to fake the light spilling onto the blue guy's face and torso. Again, really simple stuff, but it sells the idea really well. Uh, for this shot specifically, I also added a new instance of the particle explosion in the background, and I tweaked it a little bit so that the, uh, the particles blew sort of left to right as opposed to uh, at the camera. Um, after that, I need to make sure that these particles only appeared behind our subject, and this was super easy, just using a track mat made from a couple of solid layers. Uh, then we tell After Effects to only show the particles in the spots around the Mac. Okay, next, uh, let's take a look at the shot of our little purple friend here witnessing all of the chaos around the office. Again, I used the same exploding particle setup from our previous shot, along with the smoke asset, to do all the off-screen explosions. Uh, and then I jumped into Photoshop and I removed the pupils from this little guy's eyes. Then, using Dream Machine, I was able to create a clip where he doesn't have pupils and I can manually add them back in. Using the tracker again in After Effects, I tracked his entire eye uh, and then applied that tracking data to the pupils uh, to have him track properly to his face. After that, I added a couple of position keyframes to move his gaze back and forth uh, to make him look a little manic and worried about what's going on around him. I also added just a couple of small highlights over his eyes, uh, and then fixed some blinking movements using a similar technique. While this isn't perfect, um, it's great, and it allows for way more control over the scene than if I had just relied on Dream Machine. All right, now let's take a look at the final shot of the short. Uh, this office shot is made entirely of still images placed in 3D space. Uh, we have this background and into the office, two separate layers of just fur, and then this foreground wall with the poster. Uh, here you can see what the scene looks like from another angle. Again, we're gonna use that fake handheld camera to really sell the look by adding some really nice organic movement and a little parallax between our foreground and background. My last step for the video was to export the entire short and then run it through Topaz Labs AI video upscaler. Uh, I'm usually just looking to goose the resolution to 4K and maybe add a little overall sharpness. I do want to warn you that uh, a lot of these upscales can get really heavy-handed quickly and produce a lot of noise and a lot of maybe artifacts that you don't actually want in the video, so I'd suggest using them sparingly. And again, much like the Magnific step earlier, uh, you can skip this entirely and just work within the resolution of the actual clips from your, your text-to-video or image-to-video generator. Alright, so that pretty much covers all of the visuals for the short. Uh, for the audio, I used Udio to create the sort of elevator music Piat Rock backing track. 
Then I did all the sound design in Adobe Audition. Uh, I get most of my sound effects from Splice, but I did manage to make a couple of really specific sounds with Eleven Labs' new text-to-sound effects function. Uh, so like the screaming puppets that sound very much like screaming goats and the angry voice on the telephone uh, were generated with Eleven Labs. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, tinker with it, see what you think. I'm kind of excited to try it out for some future stuff. All right, guys, that covers all the tweaks and techniques I use for this project. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and maybe inspired a few of you to push your AI-generated videos a little further. Uh, if you have any questions or found this helpful, please drop a comment and consider subbing to the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Ah! Ah!